On the back of a quarter I found on the floorboard It's stamped in silver that I should trust you So I gather all the courage that I can muster And I drop it in the slot Here I am Just a man Making a phone call to God obviously start with a clean page I haven't I, I haven't put anything on the page so it is just as it comes and I'm using a size 10 paintbrush the idea is you you're creating the idea of interlocking petals with the roses and so the idea is you start small with your darker color and as you go out you're adding more water so the watercolor is becoming a softer color because if you think of a petal um, and the petals in a bud it's generally darker in the center and lighter as you come out but we're just kind of giving an impression of a flower so I think the most important thing to remember with this is it's impressionistic so we start with two interlocking C's and then the idea is we're creating those C's continue round those two tiny little ones we did. And at each time I start to add water, it will actually get paler. So we start off by putting the paintbrush on the page. And then for the second lot, we actually, you get the point and then you've got to be bold and actually push down on the paintbrush. So it fattens out, giving you that fat petal effect and it's i usually do it about thirds of the way around and then try and have them so they're interlocking and here again i'm just starting small and again pressure by adding that pressure and the, the trick to it is to start off with very little pressure add a lot of pressure and then again take the pressure off so I just started doing these and when I first started I was actually doing very thin lines so I didn't really feel like it was a petal but actually that's generally where you start and as you get more confidence you have the more confidence to press harder on the paintbrush which will then fatten out giving you more of a petal shape so the key to this is practice and I think I finally understood how to get it after about a hundred hours. Uh, I was a little bit obsessed with it for a, for a few weeks there. So is the idea that you want those um, bristles of the brush to fan out as yes. you press down? Yep, absolutely. But I think it's also not being worried if they're not perfect, because if you actually look at a flower carefully, they, in nature, very little is perfect. So you don't need to replicate something. You're giving an impression of a bloom. And then here, obviously, I find using a heat tool quite efficient because it dries it quite quickly. But in the top rows, in, top rows in the left-hand corner, I'm aware that actually I put the heat gun too close and there was so much paint on that it started to bubble. So you'll see I go back in and work that area because that's the great thing about watercolours. You can go back in to a particular flower and add more colour or add a bit more water and then lift it out with something like a piece of kitchen towel. Mm. So if you feel like you've done too much of one colour in one particular area, you can lift that out if you add a little bit of water and use a paper towel. Absolutely, and I'm always amazed at how much of the colour actually manages to come back. But at the same time, if you want to add more colour, you can actually just go back in with the same colours if you want it more vibrant. Um, so I quite like to have on a page some that are really vibrant and some that are less so, because for me, I quite like that contrast. The thing that I really love with your roses is because you've got darker in the middle and lighter on the outside, it gives a real depth to them. Agreed. And I think also the something that I've kind of come to understand is that actually the leaves almost work as a frame. So although the roses are the main focus, by actually using that same technique, 
that I used on the flowers of starting at a point, pressing a little bit firmer in order to get the outside, the actual shape of the leaf. And you can see very clearly, there are a number of times I go back in and just make the edges a bit smoother on the leaf to get sort of a leaf. But again, it doesn't need to be perfect because when you look at it as a whole, the image really pops off the page. And I think the more you try it, the more confidence you get and the more you'll enjoy it. With the heating tool, I always actually just quite like to dry on the back because I sometimes find I'm not really sure when the paint's on the page if it's pooling in particular places. So sometimes you'll see me just dry the back of the page. And then again, I go back in because I was aware that when I was drying the paint, I actually went too close, so it bubbled. And so I had quite a thick spot of paint. So I actually just went back in with a paintbrush and cleared that up. So what verse have you done this picture in today? I've chosen Psalm 5, verse 3. Lord, you hear my voice. I think just sometimes... I think as humans, actually being heard is a really important aspect of our, of who we are as humans. And so this just spoke to me and I love it. But you can really clearly see, I actually wrote it out beforehand because I'm aware that when I'm being creative, I sometimes forget spellings. So here I've put a light box underneath and this one's a slim line. I put the details below, but then I've actually put the words underneath. We're aware not everyone will have access to a light box. We found an app called Trace Table. You can download it from the app stores. It costs 99p and you can use it in exactly the same way as a light box, but either using your phone or a tablet by putting the words in between. So I've moved it just a little bit down from that really vibrant rose and starting just below that. But I guess if you're a person that doesn't particularly like their own writing or isn't confident to do their own writing, you could maybe use a, um online resource or maybe a Word document where you could write it out, print it out and then be able to use that. While Kerry continues to write Lord Hear Our Voice on this page, I'm just going to call us into prayer. Lord... I thank you. I thank you that you built us for connection and relationship. I thank you that we are brothers and sisters in Christ, that you built us and have given us a family, Lord, a family that wasn't designed by blood, but was created through you and through relationship and knowledge of your love and how we may love one another. Lord, it's a really difficult time as we all are called to shelter in our own homes. And no matter what our day brings, whether that be joy or sorrow, laughter or pain, Lord, I just pray that you would hear our voice. You already know what's on our heart. Just hear our voice as we cry out to you, Lord. And we ask for your strength and your encouragement through this situation. Lord, we thank you that you are working in this situation and that you have plans and that you have prepared for this and that we are merely seeking to partner with you and continue to seek your knowledge and your truths in this situation. So, Lord, we ask and we pray, hear our voice. Amen. And then you'll see me go back in and just all those downstrokes will just become thicker. So isn't this right that with the food and Oski pen, it's a little bit like the paintbrush technique you were talking about, that the harder you press, the fatter that line becomes. Absolutely. But it's less so than the brush pens. And so you have a little bit more control. Um, but the, the good thing about the Fudinoski is as you press harder, you, like a paintbrush, just become slightly fatter. But because of the hard nib, you just have a lot more control. 
I think it's just really pretty writing, though, because I think I like the way it flows and it joins together, um, and it all connects with one another. And I think this is a it is quite a simple thing that you could do with a a a word document, printing out some text to add a really nice script of text into your Bible. Absolutely. So what I have tended to do is, if I'm doing a theme, I will often use the same resources. So, for example. Earlier this year, I did a Bible study over the year with Bible Study Fellowship. So with that, I limited myself to uh, two sets of stamps, one large stamp and one small stamp. But it means that when I flick through my Bible, I can clearly see the Bible study I've been working through. So I can see here that you're right in the verse that this script uh, relates to aren't you absolutely that's psalm 5 verse 3 and i i always like to do that partly because i'm a visual person so i'm more likely to remember scripture if i have a picture that goes with it and so by doing that it enables me to learn scripture by heart which i found really helpful so that when i'm struggling or when something's worrying me, I can come back and go, Lord, you hear me when I feel unheard. So I can see you've got a white pen here. So why are you going in with a white pen when you've already done the black for Donosky? Well, the idea with this is the whole idea of light and shadow. So by just putting in the light, you'll actually see once it's dry, that white becomes stronger. So you're having a contrasting colour next to your letter actually makes your letter stand out more. So it's a very, very effective way, particularly when you've got an image on the page. So it means that your letters are much easier to read because if you look on the top rows, that's quite a vibrant colour. So with the white, it's just highlighting the black and so it stands out more when you actually physically look at the page. So do you go around the complete letters or how do you... No, I usually... So with the downstrokes, I always try and make those thicker. And then next to the thick lines, I always do the highlights. So I have a tendency to do it on the right-hand side of the letter. But generally, as a general rule, whichever is the thicker line will have the white highlight next to it. Because mm -hmm. you can really see that in the loop of that L for Lord, how it just really stands out off that pink. Absolutely. Now with a gel pen, um, it always has to be dried or else you will, in order for it to be, I didn't really understand this for a long time, but once it's dry, the white is almost more vibrant. So I'm just going to read Psalms 5. One to three. O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to me cry for help, my King and my God. I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord, for each morning I bring requests to you and wait expectantly. Ladies, we're thinking of you, we love you, and we hope that we can catch up with you all soon.